Okay, Cruz, according to the latest combat capabilities test, you're... Wait, what? How have you grown so much since your last test? Huh. Considering you've been doing so well, I might even give you an Elite 2 promotion. Alright gamers, it's time for another one of these class analysis videos. This time, it's snipers. Marksmen are snipers that prioritize aerial enemies, aka drones or these things from the undertides of N. Operators in this subclass include Exu, Ash, Arketo, Platinum, Blue Poison, Grey Throat, May- You know, there's just a lot of them. They have a low attack stat, but make up their DPS with a fast attack interval and multi-targeting, multi-hit, or both. Marksmen have a pretty normal size range and a low DP cost. They excel in taking down low defense enemies because of their high DPS when their attack exceeds armor, but start struggling to even medium defense mobs. Anything with 500 defense will be a struggle for most of them, and anything higher than that, marksmen do basically no damage. This problem is especially relevant to late game content such as later chapters or high risk CC. You barely see any anti-air snipers being used by themselves because a sliver amount of defense can cripple their DPS by a landslide. That doesn't mean you shouldn't have operators built in this archetype though. They serve as reliable damage options for enemies with the low and medium armor. AoE snipers have an extra tile of range compared to marksmen. They have a higher attack stat, but a lower attack interval, and their attacks, as suggested in the name, are AoE. AoE snipers also have significantly increased DP costs compared to marksmen, ranging in the high 20s. Operators in this subclass include W, Meteorite, Sessa, Shirayuki, and Catapult. All of these operators have skills that mainly boost damage or change their basic attack, except for Sessa, who kinda just sucks. W is the exception, having skills that do something different to her kit. These operators are mostly used for their extended range and their AoE, obviously. They can hit groups of enemies from afar, doing a decent amount of damage to the crowd. Close range snipers have one less tile compared to marksmen because they're close ranged. Schwartz, Acid Drop, and Province are operators of this archetype. They have a substantial amount of attack and slightly increased defense. Close range snipers also cost just under the 20 DP mark in between marksmen and AoE snipers. Their attack interval is also in the middle of marksmen and AoE snipers, but unlike marksmen, close range snipers can actually handle medium to slightly high armor enemies because of their high attack stat combined with the attack additives on their skills with the obvious downside of the limited range. Their single target DPS is strong against a variety of enemies, but that's pretty much it. Spread shooters hit everyone in their very limited range. Their trait makes it so that they deal 50% more damage to enemies in the row in front of them. The, the row. This area right here. People commonly get this confused. Not this column, this row. The trait damage scaling is also multiplicative, which combined with their skills can get some pretty decent damage out. Their stats are comparable to a close range sniper with slightly less attack and a higher attack interval, and they cost around the 30 DP mark. This absurdly high DP cost makes them most of the time not worth bringing unless you're an outright broken piece of sh- Some examples of operators in this archetype are Literal Garbage, Executor, and Pineco. Siege snipers have a quirky range. They can't hit anything in the tiles ahead of them, but have a wider range than most of the sniper subclasses. Siege snipers also prioritize the heaviest enemy in their range, making their targeting a little wonky. They have a high attack with a similar attack interval to spread shooters with a DP cost in the 20s. Because of their wide range, Siege snipers can hit enemies that most snipers can't while doing a good amount of damage. The two that we have right now are Rosa and Toddy Fonz. Deadeye snipers have a very expansive range. They prioritize the enemy with the lowest defense and have an extremely high attack stat, going above a thousand attack at E2 with max trust. You'd think they would have some serious DPS, but this is hindered by their 2.7 second attack interval which is really slow. Despite prioritizing the enemy with the lowest defense, Deadeye Snipers are also fit to take down high defense enemies because of their large damage per hit. Firewatch, Andriana, Ambriel, and Fartooth are all Deadeye Snipers that we have at the moment. This subclass only has one operator, which is Rosemontis. Bombardiers deal physical attacks twice in a small AoE around the target, with the second instance of damage dealing halved damage. 
They have the same range as Dead Eye Snipers, with a significantly lower attack stat, but lower attack interval as well. There's not much I can say about the subclass, similar to Tacticians in my Vanguard's analysis, since Rosmontis is the only operator of this archetype. Alright, so we have to check up on the other snipers. Passenger? What do you want? We're kinda busy. What do you mean your combat testing was rigged? Look, I don't have time to look into it. We did poorly, and those were your results. Just wait till next time, we can do another checkup. Now that I've introduced all the respective subclasses of the sniper class, let's go and highlight some outstanding operators and debates. Niche analysis. Let's start with the very annoying debate I see all the time. Axu versus Ash versus Arketo. All three are marksman snipers who prioritize aerial enemies, and for now, let's just compare Exu and Arketo to make it easier to differentiate between the two. We'll save Ash for later. Exu's talents provide her with some stat buffs to her attack speed, attack, and health. Her third skill is an automatic skill that decreases her attack interval, makes her attacks deal 5 hits, and increases the damage of those hits. The attack interval modifier on her skill is bugged, actually, so it's modified twice. Meaning at M3, when it shows a minus 0.11 attack interval, it's actually minus 0.22. This skill just screams big DPS. Attack interval reduction lets Exu attack more times per second. The increase to damage is multiplicative, scaling well with additive buffs, which is why she pairs well with Warfarin. Multi-hit is a real killer, essentially multiplying all her damage by 5. Marketo's third skill gives her a 30% additive attack one extra tile of range, and allows her to deal 3 hits to 2 targets simultaneously. Her first talent gives all snipers with offensive SP recovery 1 SP per 2.5 seconds, while her second talent gives her a shield on deployment that, when broken, gives her 7 SP. Now that we've established their skills, let's compare the DPS between the two versus enemy defense on a single enemy. The best way to show this is with a graph. The top line is Exu, and the bottom is Arketo. On the y-axis, we have average DPS, and on the x-axis, it's defense. The reason why the lines stay flat after a certain defense is because that's when they're doing minimum damage due to the 5% damage rule. Anyways, it's pretty clear X is winner here, so let's switch the graph to skill DPS and... Oh... That's even worse for our kiddo. Alright, let's switch it up a little. How does her DPS hold against two enemies? Aksu obviously remains the same, since she can only attack one enemy at a time. Arketo, however, gets a leg over on Aksu because of her multi-target on S3, which is shown in the average DPS. On skill DPS, she still slightly underperforms compared to Aksu against enemies with less than 400-ish defense, but starts outperforming her past that. These graphs clearly define Arketo and Aksu's niches. Arketo is better at multi-target, while Exu is better against single targets. There's still some reasons you would want to use Arketo over Exu. For one, her skill isn't an automatic activation skill, so you can actually have controllability over when you want to time the skill. The second reason is the range extension. She gets an added extra tile of range, making her able to hit enemies that Exu wouldn't be able to hit. An extra tile of range can be pretty impactful on maps, especially when there's a key enemy in that extra tile that you just want to get rid of, but you're one tile short. Arketo can also support other operators like Blue Poison and Meteorite with her SP talent, substantially increasing their DPS, but Exu with buffs just nukes bosses. Okay, cool. So Exu is for single target deleting, Arketo is for multi-target and SP support. Okay, so now for Exu vs Ash. Ash's S2 triggers her first talent, which stuns a group of enemies for 4 seconds. It reduces her attack interval by 80%, and when she's attacking stunned enemies, she will deal 250% more damage. Ash only has 31 bullets in this skill. Ash's second talent makes her first deployment cost 3 less DP, and immediately grants her 20 SP on her first deployment. It's clear from her talents that Ash can be used as a heli drop for her S2 on her first deployment. Comparing a DPS versus Exu, Ash significantly does better. It's not even a contest. Ash's attack interval reduction is really strong, but not as strong as Exu, 
and her 250% multiplier beats Exu's 110%. Unlike Exu, Ash can handle higher defense enemies too, getting decent damage in on the 900 to 1000 defense range. Looking at skill total damage, something interesting happens here. Exu still gets more hits per second because of all the attack speed and attack interval bonuses she gets, so the slope of her line is actually steeper. This is why Exu performs better against lower defense enemies compared to Ash. Exu gets punished by defense more than Ash, so that's why Ash takes over total damage wise after around 250 defense. There are two catches to Ash. The first is that the enemies have to be stunnable in order for her to get the attack scaling off. The second is less obvious. Going back to the calculator, Ash skill 2 does way less total damage than Exu's third skill. The calculator even gave Ash an overestimation since the stun from her flashbang runs out before she's able to empty the entire 31 bullets of her skill 2, meaning she doesn't get the fancy 250% attack boost near the end of the skill duration. Now that we've done a thorough DPS analysis of Arketo, Exu, and Ash, we can finally highlight their niches. Arketo specializes in multi-target and can support your other sniper operators with her SP talent. Exu is for shredding enemies out of existence with her high total damage and DPS, but you'll need to have buffers and debuffers to help her in order for her to actually shine for higher defense enemies. Ash works great solo on stunnable enemies even though she can't reach the damage potential like Exu. My turn to take out the trash this week? Uh, I guess I'll do it right now. What the... I have to split this video in another two parts. Okay, see you guys like next next week. Okay, bye. <laughs>